Hello everyone, my name is Vivian and welcome back, welcome back to Echo, the short stories. Oh god, we got three left. We did date, runaway lights, phone, and now party. Party, 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 October 2012, party, 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 Considering Chase is literally talking to Carl. Carl, do you know where the keys are? <laughs> I've been doing this shit for six years. I ain't gotten better. <laughs> That's usually a sign that someone is shit. I dig through my pockets again, but my fingers only rake the grocery shopping list I made and some chump change from the soda I bought earlier. I have brief hope. I brief hope. What the fuck? A glimmer of salvation bubbles to the surface when I feel something metal and pointy. When I bring it out, though, it's just an old keychain I won at the fair and never bothered to take out. It's even still got a sticker on it. Then you leave him on your desk? His voice is barely audible over what I can only imagine are the ten-year-olds he's playing his shooter with. I thought I saw him on your desk. I already checked, they're not. I opened the closet drawer and filled to the brim with old comics. Still no keys. Maybe they got thrown in the trash by accident. Why would... I rubbed the bridge in my snout. I'm in no rush to get out today. Is the party won't start for an hour and a half at least, but I won't get anywhere without the car keys. Our dorm isn't the greatest, but right now it still feels like I'm trying to find a needle in a haystack. A haystack that's usually very well organized. What? Oh, I thought we were talking as... I thought we were Carl, but a haystack that's usually very well organized as per usual, I blame Carl. What do you mean? Mm -hmm. Hear the sound of a rocket launcher going off. Carl follows up with a stream of swear words, the likes of which I haven't heard since we were 12 and hanging out with Flynn after school. What do you need them for anyway? I got the groceries this morning. Weed. You got weed this morning, Carl. I can smell it from here. I hear an awkward chuckle. You know how it is. Healthy greens. Anyway, where are you going? I scour another drawer. This one's full of greeting cards. Old ones, by the looks of it. Congratulating Carl and me for getting into college. Just all the other ones have been from the perspective of other characters, and I just never considered that it could actually just be Chase. <laughs> I thought for some reason that Chase was playing the video game. And that Carl was not, but now with the, you know, this dialogue, uh, with Carl's dialogue getting cut off by the rocket launcher, that makes me think that Carl's playing it and I got all fucked up, so I just need to shut up and read the fucking thing. God damn it. I scour another drawer, and this one's with the greeting cards, Carl and me getting into college. With the congratulations. I flip each one over before shutting it again. I'm heading to Vincent's place, remember? I thought I told you. Lift one of the vases Carl's mom gave him when we left town. You're actually going? I thought you said you were going to study tonight. Nah, no, I got invited and a couple of my friends will be there, so I'm going. I spot the keys and let out a sound, which once it's out of my mouth, I realize it resembles a deflating balloon. They're right here, Carl. Jesus! Sitting on the shelf right next to the TV. I pick him up. I almost feel like doing a little victory dance at this point. I've been looking for these damn things for a solid hour already. Carl's still as stone faced as ever. I don't know if he's had we I don't know if he's had weed or if he's just in a bad mood. Maybe both. We know that he doesn't like uh, being at college, but he also could just be focused on the game. Or he could be stoned. 
and sit on the bed with him. It's a far more comfortable mattress than the ones that came with the dorm. I think Carl's parents had it specially ordered when he left town. Carl didn't tear his eyes off the game. Dude, get off my back. I didn't mean to- Shit. Round's over. Round's over. The cacophony of voices that had served as the backdrop for our conversation abruptly dies out, replaced with the most generic orchestral music I've ever heard. Carl's got the worst score on the board. Aw, oh, damn. I don't even have time to say anything before he tosses the controller off to the side. It's a small miracle it doesn't break on impact, considering how hard he's tossing it around. Cross my arms behind my head and get comfortable. You alright, man? You seem kind of mad. <sighs> Carl's hands go to the pockets of his ripped jeans. There is shirt. I'm just fucking with you. I could be better. Really? Absolutely draw a finger over the keychain of my car keys. It's the one with the picture of Leo on it. I think it's the first picture I'd ever taken with my own camera. Carl notices from the corner of his eye and playfully smacks my paw away, but seems to remind him of something as he turns to me and opens his muzzle. How you holding up with the whole Leo thing going on, I mean? I have to ponder that for a moment myself. Leo doesn't cross my mind a whole lot these days, but when I do think of him, I feel empty, hollow. To the point where I wonder, somewhere in the back of my mind, if leaving Echo has been the right choice. In the end, however, I shake my head to snap out of it, as I always do when asked about Leo. I've done it for my parents, I've done it for my friends. And I've done it for myself, when looking in the mirror all alone, late at night. It's better this way, you know? I mimic Carl's sitting position, thrusting my hands down in my jean pockets. I smirk, inching closer to him. Besides, I've got all the man I need right here. <laughs> it's a poor way to lighten the mood, but Carl falls for it hard, making a mock face of disgust. Ooh, pardon, but I don't associate <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm not I ain't saying that, but I get that he's joking. <laughs> he does his best southern drawl. That'd probably just sound like Harlan if I tried to imagine Carl doing a southern accent. Those two things mixed would make Harlan. <laughs> the Harlan boys. You know, that's that's <laughs> That's what that sounds like for me. I snort. For those last, what, nine years? That was just you letting me down gently. Exactly. <laughs> you notice the way I'm sitting, shifts his legs around and pulls his hands out of his pockets. I'm glad you finally got it after all this time. It's a weight off my shoulders. And here I thought we had something special. We laugh together. Almost enough to make me forget about Echo for a moment. Almost. So, this Vincent guy... Is it a date, or...? I roll my eyes. It's just a party. Jeez. Nothing's gonna happen. If he tries anything funny, just give me a call. Carl takes a large swig from the two-liter soda bottle sitting next to him. It's almost captivating to watch him down it all in the span of roughly an hour. I think his record's a f at 45 minutes. I'll come pick you. He cuts himself off with a burp. Pick you up. It's a five minute drive. I'll be fine. Thanks, though. You mom made me promise to look after you, man. He slams the bottle down a bit too hard. Soda erupts from the bottle and stains his pants. Oh, fuck. I laugh. Sounds like you need more help than I do. He wags a finger at me. Shut it. Can you pass me the towel? Don't want to come with? With no... Uh, with no... Ex no quotation marks. I toss him the towel hanging over the back of his chair. 
He invited you, too. Nah, you know me, Chase. I'm no good at parties. He's vigorously rubbing at the stain, but it won't come out no matter how much he how much pressure he applies. I don't even think it's really drying. When he realizes it, he shoots me a pleading glance. Just a tiny hint of despair in his eyes. It's a look he's given to me many times since we were kids, and I know exactly what it means. Nope, you're on laundry duty today. Laundry duty today, Carl. There's a lot of... That's a lot of good syllables there. You're on laundry duty today, Carl. <laughs> Jesus. You're on laundry duty today, Carl. <laughs> That's fun to say. You're on laundry duty today, Carl. <laughs> oh, that's really fun. You're on laundry duty today, Carl. <laughs> oh, that's delightful. Hey, babe. Did, did you hear this? It's a fun sentence. You're on laundry duty today. Did you hear that? It's you're on laundry duty today, but you're on laundry duty today. It's fun, isn't it? You're on laundry duty today. Yeah, the from um from jump or uh what it's from jump it's from jump around or is it just jump? It's from jump. Crisscrosses jump. Cause I'm the miggity 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 mac y'all. That part and it makes you mad because you can't do it. But yeah, but yeah. Go on laundry duty today, y'all. That's so fun! I'm the miggity 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 mac, daddy. I'm the miggity 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 mac. Yeah, it's so fun! It's so fun! Anyway, so Carl's on laundry duty today. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's on laundry duty today. <laughs> <laughs> It's so fun! Uh, I need to move on, but it's just so fun! The miggity 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 mac daddy. <laughs> I didn't know yo! I fold my arms over my chest. And and you're cooking tomorrow. I got a lecture in the I got a lecture in the afternoon. Something about the importance of composition and photography. He groans and stretches. Composition and photography? Sounds pretty interesting. It is pretty interesting. I eye one of the magazines sitting on the table. It's from a few months back, before we even got here. A layer of dust is starting to form on them. What about your classes? Mm hmm? The way he's looking at me, you'd think I'd say something offensive. My what? I drag a finger through the dust, then bring it to my face. My paw pad's all gray now, and the dust my paws kicked up is almost enough to give me a coughing fit. Your classes? How are they? Oh, I've... Um... He shrinks back into his seat like he's trying to hide behind his hoodie. He finally just shrugs. Okay, I guess. Not bad. I raise an eyebrow. Just okay? It's... it's a business major, dude. Chase. Chase dude, sorry. He's given up on rubbing the stain. Not much going on besides numbers, numbers, and... more numbers. He snorts. I don't even know how my mom could keep track of all of them. So many numbers! I chuckle. Well, sounds like college. Maybe I should have stayed in Echo. I'm not really cut out for this stuff. Gently squeeze his shoulder. Pulls his beanie down to the point it's almost covering his eyes. You can see him nodding under there, I think. I let it sit there. I don't want to make Carl uncomfortable. His parents put enough pressure on him as is. Instead, I just put a hand on his shoulder. Your hand was already there, but okay. He leans into the touch, a smile appearing on his face again. He picks up the controller once more and starts a new game. He hastily points towards a second controller. You still have time, right? 
I look at Carl's pleading grin, and then on my watch. Indeed, I still have another hour until I really need to leave, and I've already freshened up and everything. Before I've even managed to grab the controller, almost tripping over the clothes and trash on the floor in the meantime, Carl's already started a match. Voices start up again, there's accusations and shit slinging abound already. I'm gonna be playing online? Of course you're playing online! The bots are way too easy! I thought we could just do a versus match or some- My character gets taken out with a headshot almost as soon as I'm in. There's some shrieking on the other end. Come on, Chase, get it together! I'm not used to these controls. I played one of the older games in this series before, mostly back in Echo during the summer when it was so hot you couldn't even see go outside without spontaneously combusting. This one's got an entirely different control scheme, and I only managed to get a grip on it after dying a few times. If Flynn was here, I'm sure he would have he'd have a jab ready. I'm sure he'd have a jab ready. Better at side scrollers, you know. I get stabbed ten times in the chest. Good lord, by a guy whose nickname leaves a lot to be desired. And fighting games. You suck at fighting games too. I grin at him. I do not suck at fighting games, lack of quotation marks. I beat your ass last time, remember? Only because you used the cheapest character and kept spamming the same move. It stings just a little, but he isn't lying, now that I think about it. I remember reading somewhere that the character I used isn't allowed in tournaments because of how broken he is. Naturally, he ended up being my favorite. Didn't help that he was cute, too. Well, you could have dodged it after the fifth time I used it. Seriously? He takes another swig from his bottle. Some droplets fall on his hoodie. Good god. That was a bullshit combo and you know it. Somehow I managed to land a headshot on the guy who killed me and Carl lets out a war cry that sounded like a dying frog. A bit too soon, as I stand out of cover a bit too long, which earns me a rocket to the face from the player who was standing right next to said guy. I swear through gritted teeth, but I persevere. After I get killed by a guy who's blatantly shooting me through walls, however, I just... Yeah, I just give up. Cheater. Yeah, it's whatever, I guess. I shift on the bed, kicking up my legs. I've had a couple of levels in Claws of Destruction. I think I'm done with this one for now, if that's okay. After grabbing a granola bar from the kitchen cabinet, I'm finally on my way to the party. At least they were able to crop out the Amazon logo on that fucking van. <laughs> Only half my mind's actually focused on the road. The other half can't stop grumbling about the heat. There's the protagonist energy that we know. And tolerate. I probably should have put on something other than jeans. Maybe shorts. Or would that look silly? Vincent's place is near the other side of campus. It's a short drive, but in this heat, it feels like miles. My parents' old car doesn't have air conditioning. It'll make visiting them back in Echo torture if I ever decide to go back there. <laughs> <clears throat> Perhaps one day, <laughs> one day, for now, I'm pretty content where I am. Even though I've seen it often, I'm always struck by how gorgeous the campus looks at sunset. Echo's got some nice views, but Pueblo just kicks it to the curb in every aspect. Looks exactly like what the brochures make it out to be, which I've heard is pretty impressive for a place like this. I'm just happy it's got indoor and outdoor pools. I wouldn't be able to survive a week without those. Just driving in this weather makes me seriously long for air conditioning. There's a couple of cars in the parking lot in front of the building already. Mine looks out of place next to all the newer models. And again, I suppose I'm a bit less affluent when compared to most of the other students here with the muscle cars and scholarships. Didn't stop me from getting in, at least. Some of the people I recognize from my class wave at me as I pass them. Others ignore me and keep on smoking just out of sight. 
Judging by the smell, it's weed. You shouldn't be surprised. People seem to be a lot more lax about that here than they are back home. Might be one of the reasons Carl's mom had him go to this university. Takes me a couple of rings to realize the doorbell's busted. Even longer to notice the tiny slip of paper stuck to the door telling me to go around back. When I do, I met with the jovial grin of a wolf who already looks like he's had one too many. Vincent walks towards me, arms spread open wide. He's wearing a plain white tee. Hey there, Delilah! What the fuck? You fucking dumped me! Get the fuck away from me, Spoofy! I'm sorry, you just fucking scared me! Yes, you did. He's wearing a plain white shirt and the most casual shorts. Looks like I did put on too many layers. When I return the awkward hug he tries to give me, I can smell cheap liquor on his breath. A far cry from the diligent student he usually is during classes. Chase, how are you, man? Doing just fine, thanks. Nice uh, party you've got going on here. Lots of people. He chuckles, patting my back. There's more inside. Way more. Come on in, I'll show you. I follow him into the building, through some small hallways. I notice Jenna standing at the other end when we turn a corner. Looks like she's busy reading something. I call out to her, but it doesn't seem like she can hear me. Just when I'm about to try again, Vince tugs me into his room. Oh, hey, look at this uh, room. It's spacious, I'll give him that much. Busy, too. There's tons of people that we can't see. <laughs> that would be hard to fucking edit, so I, I don't give them. I, it's okay. Uh, tons of people in the living room area alone. Some of them are playing beer pong, others are chatting. Well, it's more like they're shouting to each other over the loud music. I believe I heard we uh, they referenced this uh, party in the main game, I think. A girl from my class have been working together on a project. Lana sits in a corner, playing with her phone. She's wearing a rather eye-catching, revealing red dress. One I'm pretty sure violates some university dress code. Sometimes she giggles to herself. When I catch her eye, she immediately puts, her f puts it away and steps over to me. There you are, Chase. It's not like you to be this late. She grins from ear to ear, displaying her almost eerily white teeth. I lean against a wall, eyeing the crowd from a distance with her. I had trouble finding a good parking spot. How's the party? Anything crazy going on? It's been pretty routine so far. We were just getting to the good part. She smiles, tipping her muzzle toward the table. The drinks are over there. The good part? Next to me, Vincent nods, then tilts his muzzle toward the kitchen. His ears perk up. Lana and I went out and got something special for the guests. Part of me already knows what it's going to be. Probably booze or something. From what I've heard, it's what college parties are all about. I don't know. I've, this is the first one I've ever been to. Something special, huh? What is it? You'll see. She grabs her phone again, tapping away on it like she's writing a novel. It's gonna be good. I kick back and enjoy the party a bit. This good thing sounds pretty questionable, even more so once Lana disappears into the kitchen before returning with a big silver tray. She passes it from person to person, everyone taking something from it. I try not to think about it too much. By the looks of it, it's not the usual party snacks. It takes a while to get through everyone, so I just grab a can of soda from the cooler on the table. It's an off-brand, so I guess the booze is more important. Finally, Lana thrusts the tray in front of my face with the, wild, with the widest of smiles. Her enthusiasm only leaves me disappointed when I find nothing but blueberry muffins. It's an edible! It's an edible. Blueberry muffins that smell kind of funny, like they've been out for a few days already. It's like those cakes Janice tried selling at the diner a few years back. 
scratch the back of my head. They're... They're just muffins. It's the big deal. A large lion with a long braided mane pipes up behind her. Special recipe, man. They're edibles. I've seen the lion around campus before, but I don't know his name, just his face. I think he's in Carl's class. Like... Drugs. <laughs> I take one of the muffins from the tray and bring it up to my nose. Up close, it just smells awful. I narrow my eyes. You better not be pulling a prank on me. No prank. You should try one, Chase. She grins at me. She seems honest enough. Not that I think she's trying to poison me. I mean, to them, they were being honest. They called it what they would call it. And he seems to be understanding what it is by referring to it as drugs, but um, no one has blatantly referred to it as a weed edible, a marijuana edible muffin. Uh, but uh, there is still gray area where, there we go. Now I think about it, Carl told me about edibles once about a year ago. Okay, so he, he, he's starting to understand. He just seems a little bit out of the loop about what's exactly going on. Time's been ticking by way too fast ever since I graduated from high school. It's been two years, I think. For him, at least. For me, it's been nine? Christ. I can't remember what he told me about them specifically. Something about not being able to get high from them? Then again, Carl's probably used to the stuff that's a lot heavier. Around me, people are already popping them in their muzzles like it's no big deal. Oh man, the poor bastard. He's... Bastard. He really doesn't know what he's doing. Ah, uh, he has no fucking clue and no one is... I mean, no one's gonna go out of their fucking way to be like, have you ever had this before? Here's what you should expect for every fucking person at a party. But like, it would be nice if that was the case. It'd be preferable if that was the case, but it's not to be expected. Which is unfortunate, but to be realistic. This probably isn't a prank then, unless they lace just one of them with some weird Russian roulette but with muffins kind of thing. Should I do this? I mean, I promised my parents I'd try to be responsible while I was away from home, but I don't think this would hurt. If it does, I can always just leave. Uh, everyone's eyes are on me when I stick it in my mouth. This peer pressure makes the fur on the back of my neck stand on end. It's not as gross as I expected it to be, at least. Thank God. I can still taste a bit of the blueberry in there. The weed part, though. Well, I've never used weed. Though I don't know what it tastes like. If this is it, it's nothing special. I've tried, like, there was like a nerds, like the candy nerds edible. And then, like, there was like, I cut it in like half. <laughs> and that's all I've had in terms of anything related to weed. <laughs> and I didn't even react to it. Because that's like, already barely anything. And then there was already, like, cutting that in half. And even then, the person I was with was like, we gotta make sure that you're okay, and that nothing reacts, and that you're managing it okay, and yeah, and then it was like, yeah, nothing. And then that person's, like, mom was like, really? All of this for ne for that tiny amount? And we're like, yes, because <laughs> we they've never done anything like this before. But yeah, so we were, that that's all I've ever done in terms of that. Uh... <laughs> And, uh, that was, like, maybe a year ago? If, at least, maybe, at least many, many months. I have absolutely no intention of doing anything with smoke. Absolutely not. If I do anything with marijuana, it's gonna be with an edible. Mainly because I'm a fat bastard, but also, uh, just because I don't want to fuck with a smoke, dude. Th that's, that fucks up your lungs and your throat and can get cancer and no, no. Anyway, back to the story. Hell, I don't even feel anything. 
Well, you just took it, man. Lana sets a tray down on the coffee table. A sheep sitting on the couch takes a muffin from it as soon as she leaves it alone. How is it? You okay? I shrug my shoulders and drink my soda. I don't really feel anything. Her lips stretch into a thin line and she looks down at the tray again with a frown. Huh. Lion speaks up again, taking a swig from the beer bottle he's holding. Maybe we we'll know that strong. I'm, I sure as hell felt it when I eat mine. Maybe he's just immune to it or something. I shake my head. Maybe I am, maybe I'm not. Maybe it just hasn't kicked in yet. Vince gives my back a smack. <laughs> maybe. Didn't think you'd be such a heavyweight, Chase. Oh. Oh, you're talking him up and then he's going to have a fucking panic attack. It's a compliment I don't quite know how to take, or even comprehend. The music's changing. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. In fact, even standing feels difficult to grasp at the moment, and I find myself wobbling on my feet once he pulls back his hand. Lightheaded doesn't even begin to describe it. Oh! Oh! Shit starts moving around. Oh, the background is fucking up. Dizzy, nauseous, about to borf. That's a more apt description. I stumble back and forth to keep myself upright, try clinging to the nearest flat surface, but it doesn't really help. The ground is moving underneath my feet. See, this is the kind of feeling I don't understand wanting to feel like. A little bit high, a little bit floaty, sure, but this? I, I don't like, I don't understand wanting to feel like this. Where there were two people before, I now see four swaying from side to side as everything spins around me. It's like I'm out on a raft in the middle of the ocean. Twenty minutes into the party and I'm already completely out of it. Just probably setting all sorts of party records. Is this what being high feels like? What the hell was in those things? Shit! Chase! I recognize her voice, but when I turn to look at Lana, she's just a blur, a featureless blob of red and white, ever-shifting. Chase, are you okay? What's wrong with him? Someone's tugging at my arm, but gravity's currently working against me in every possible way. Hold on, hold on, get up. The moment I let go of that cabinet, I fall to the floor. Any moment now, I'm gonna sink through it. Where I'll end up, I don't know. My head hurts. My stomach hurts. The empty muffin liner is on the floor next to me, and I can still make out the pink frills. Someone call 911! The despair in her voice is almost palpable. She takes a hold of my wrist. My hand just flops around when she moves it. And get arrested? Fuck no! Fucking shit, I don't know what to do! What do I do? I want to comfort her, tell her that I'll be fine, even if it's a lie, but no sound comes out of my muzzle. <laughs> Try to sit and push myself off the ground, but my back just ends up hitting the floor again, followed by my ass. Hope I'm not being filmed right now. I just lay there. With my brain and body in complete disarray like this, there's no way I'm getting up anytime soon. And despite the screams, despite the loud music, despite everything, I feel my eyelids grow heavier and heavier. The world goes dark before my very eyes, and the last thing I think about before I'm out like a light is how comfortable the cold floor is. The chase! Someone screams. I return to the land of the living with a long gasp for air. The scent of a very strong coffee fills my nostrils. As soon as I realize I have control over my body again, I thrash in the sheets, which only leaves me tangled when I settle down. My breathing is still harsh, uneven, but I'm okay. I'm okay. Sheets. I'm in a bed, not the floor. My paws shoot up to my eyes. I rub them before opening them. There's a lot of gross shit in them. Probably been out for a while. I can only imagine how bad I must be reeking right now. I'm still wearing the clothes I was wearing last night, too. Fuck. Clock says it's just past nine. How I managed to get back here, I have no idea. 
and I try to think about what happened last night, and my head just starts hurting more. Oh, what the hell? Carl waltzes in like it's no one's business, wearing nothing but pajama pants that look a few sizes too big for even for him. There's a piece of toast in his mouth and two mugs of coffee in his paws. Oh, you're up. Here, I made coffee. I can see that. I think so. He sits down next to me, exhaling through his nostrils, just eating his toast. We made rules about only eating at the table, but right now I'm just glad to be awake and in good health. I speak up once my mug's half empty. So, what happened? How did I get back here? Carl noisily swallows the last bits of his toast. Well, a few guys and one girl dropped you off here a few hours after you left. Shit and grin slowly spreads across his face. You were completely zoned out, man. Talking about random shit and giggling like a kid. It was kind of funny to watch. I glare at him and fold my arms. I'm sure it was. I'm honestly just glad all I got from it was a headache. I might not be invited to future parties, but I'd rather have that than end up dead because I couldn't handle a muffin. I got you some water and put you in bed. He takes a large gulp of coffee and smiles. See? I can be responsible sometimes. Sure. I set the mug down on the nightstand and wipe the rest of the sleep out of my eyes. God damn, I feel terrible. So, your turn to answer my question. He tucks his legs in like a kindergartner. What happened last night? Did you really get drunk, or... Or, you know, he mimics taking a drag from a cigarette. No! My shakily uttered denials, not the most convincing, but Carl's doesn't seem to pick up on it, thank God. Hell no, I was just, I just had a couple too many, that's all. Even if you did try some, no fur off my back. I mean... Look at me. I think I'm past just a little experiment. I fall back. It's a bit awkward to admit do to doing something I used to tease Carl for. Especially when I fainted almost immediately after trying it. Maybe I'll tell him later. Preferably when we're done with college, so it'll just be one of many escapades. I do hope future escapades won't leave me feeling this much like I got hit by a train, though. Ooh! Ooh! Irony! I finally sit up. God, my back stiff as can be. What have you been up to while I was out? <sighs> Studying, believe it or not. That and laundry. You stack the two cups and stand up. I washed your stuff, too. Should be done by the time you're done with your shower. You got a lecture to go to, right? Oh, shit. Yeah, the lecture. I bury my face in my paws and rub at my temples. I should be able to make it if I hurry. Looks like I woke up just in time. And surprisingly enough, I have Carl to thank for it. Hey, Carl. He turns around, nearly dropping one of his coffee cups. Hmm? I shoot him a smile. Thank you. Wanna play some more Claws of Destruction when I get back? You're on. Wow. Nice! That was a nice little fucking story. I like that. Get a little more dynamic between Carl and Chase when they were in college. Get a little more dynamic of that. And a bit of an insight into a story that I believe was only mentioned a little bit, but a little more illumination, why don't you? I liked it. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed it too. Thank you very much for watching. We'll be into one of the last few short stories on the next episode. But until then, thank you very much. And I will talk to you all next time. Bye, everybody.